Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live q and I have my friend Liz here with me from Liz Letters and if you follow her on Instagram, you know she's sort of, I mean I don't want to say she invented the watercolor, liquid watercolor blending for lettering, but like definitely one of the first people on the scene doing that. So I'm super excited to have her here with us today and she's going to show all of us her skills with that. So um, just before I introduce her and before we get started, I just wanna mention again, every, same as every week, just try and hold your questions to the end. We had a couple submitted beforehand that we're gonna get to. And if we have time at the end, we'll open it up for questions for Liz as well. But um, just during the lesson, if you could hang on to your questions and leave them for the end, that'd be great. But um, yeah, so welcome Liz. Thanks, good to see ya. Yeah. So, um, I'm just going to say right off the bat that the sun is starting to set in my end right now <laughs> and I'm right in front of a big window. So if it starts getting dark over here, just don't mind me. Um, but it should only be getting brighter on your end, right? Like what time is it there? <laughs> it's like 9am, but I'm, it's like winter. So the sun is, yeah. Right. Right. It's making its way up still. Yeah. It's cold there and it's hot here, which is so strange. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if anybody's tuning in, tell us where in the world you are and how hot it is there. Because it's like, I don't know, I mean, a lot of people in the States aren't going to know what this means. But in Canada, it's like 45 degrees right now, which is outrageously hot for this time like of year. Like Celsius. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. It's, it's insane. It's actually, and like, it's it's record breaking right now. So it's crazy, which is why it's so funny that it's cold for you. <laughs> yeah, we're in like single digits overnight at the moment. Yeah, that's, that's what we're normally at but anyway okay, so okay. um weather aside I think we should uh we should just jump in and start talking about lettering so Let's for people do who don't know you which I think is probably rare um can you just tell us a little bit about you how you got started with all of this and kind of what your journey's been like yeah sure so I kind of um after baby number six was born in 2013 I still can't believe you have six kids <laughs> I know right I can't some days either it's a bit ridiculous um but I did take six children to school this morning um so <laughs> like count them as they get in the car um the he had some interesting health stuff and I was working as a freelance graphic designer then and it sort of just made that a bit tricky and so I decided I would start an online store selling typographic prints and somewhere along that whole journey I kind of stumbled across hand lettering online and just became obsessed like you know that as we do as we do <laughs> and so I started like I think I bought a couple of online courses and then didn't do any of them because as if we ever do. No, I mean, everyone does our courses, right? No. Um, and then I basically just spent every night with um, black ink and a paintbrush in my hand for months and months and months and months and months. And then um, started sharing on my Instagram and started posting videos on my Instagram and then started all my online courses. So did you have list letters before you started doing hand lettering? Like, did you have that for your graphic design? Okay. No, so I started at the Grace Place and it was funny because at one point, because um, I was selling like Christian Bible verses and stuff and um, I couldn't get the Instagram handle and so I had like the Grace Place AU or something really messy and somewhere along the line, a couple of my like business friends were like, you just need to change that, like you need to make it something, you know, and so List Letters was born and somewhere along the line that kind of totally overtook the other. And you said you started with a paintbrush in your hand. So did you use a paintbrush before you used brush pens? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I bought, um, I think I bought a few brush pens and I hated them and I just wasn't, I don't know. Whereas I found something really satisfying about the whole inky thing. And, and I think I was really drawn to that really messy inky style, which I don't really do. So I don't know where that. It's not really my personality, but I think our lettering reflects our personality. Like I think um, in, in a lot of ways, you know, so that's why I don't do really like precise um, pointed pen stuff because that's not really me either. Um, but yeah. Okay. I, I need to yeah, close really the blinds. Funny. It's like it's <laughs> totally blinding me. I need to close the blinds. Give me one second. Oh, <sighs> that was epic. Okay, that's like a little better. Now I got this just oh, weird just, yeah. in my face, but 
That's okay. We're going to have the camera on your hands in a second anyway. So sure. <laughs> um, but that's cool. So how long ago did you say that was that you started? Like late 2014. Like four and between, years ago. And between then and now you've gotten like a bajillion followers and grown yeah. it like crazy. Yeah, which was so really cool. like video. So at the end of 2015, I started posting video, which was sort of right in those, they were 15 second videos. That was before we even had one minute videos. Yeah. Yeah. So they were super sped up. But in the space of five weeks, my account grew from like two and a half thousand to over 50,000 or something because of videos. Everyone yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Videos. It's so crazy. And it's, a, and it's, I mean, you can say that now and give that as advice, but it's different now because everybody's doing it. It is different. Yeah. But I still think it's, you know, creating engaging content that people want to you know that will enjoy and whatnot but yeah, yeah. satisfying satisfying videos yeah, people love watching. Like that. but people like seeing process too like you think about some of um ian and stefan's videos and stuff where they're showing process and people really love seeing that yeah well and speaking of process we're gonna get to see yours so um <laughs> can you talk to us a little bit about like what your favorite supplies are and stuff before yeah, we switch things sure. over to your hands we can do that so um, I have long been obsessed with Ecoline liquid watercolours, which is funny because um, when I first, that's these, I'm assuming everyone can see that. Um, when I first started looking for coloured inks, everyone, I saw a lot of people using the PH, Dr. PH Martin, you know, those, yeah. those ones. Can't get them over here in you know, the underside of the world. Um, and so my local art store happened to have the eco lines and turned out to be the best thing because I love them. Well, they're cheaper so too. Like Dr. PH Martins are so expensive. Yeah, they are. And I actually like the consistency of the eco lines, the way the pigment really is kind of, it's not really suspended in there. It's just, it's beautifully kind of, yeah. And they blend beautifully. Um, so I have a bunch of those. I have a bunch of these um, Pentel Aquash that you can fill. I usually fill them with ink, which you can see there. And in the early days, I used to kind of um, fill them up with a dropper and then empty them again and wash them out and all the rest. Now I just have 50 of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have two favourite paintbrushes. Um, one is a Winsor & Newton, which is the sort of one of the really early kind of soft, squishy ones that I used to like using. And the other is a round white Taclon brush. I usually use like a size two or three. Um, and I have a few other kind of bits and pieces that I use sometimes. And yeah. That we can also favorite. point out if you're working on yeah. them, I can, I can type them up totally. on the screen when they come up. So, yeah. and then for paper, what do you use for paper most of the time? Um, I use, and this is again just about what's been available. I use this. Is that reversed or is it right? No, that's right. Amazing. Um, it's an Araldo field pad paper, and it's just kind of like a medium weight. It's not an amazing watercolor paper, but that's partly because I'm rarely doing original pieces to give to people. So if I'm doing watercolor lettering, I'm often going to scan it and reproduce it that way, or I'm just sort of doing it for practice and I don't want to spend a huge amount of money on paper for something like that so this is a good like it's got a little bit of texture um and it's kind of a medium kind of weight so it's not um like it'll it's a bit more robust than just using kind of plain paper so it's actually like it's it's watercolor paper though I just don't know that brand yeah I think it's I think it's an Australian brand again um it says it's suitable for sketching with watercolour, pencil, ink and crayon. It's a 225 GSM. So that's like, do you use GSM? Yeah. For paper weights? <laughs> yeah. You do, but yeah. Americans don't, do they? I don't know what that would convert to. Um, so it, okay, so it's not necessarily like a watercolour, like cold press or hot press or anything paper. Mm -mm. Okay. No, it's really like a middle of the road, kind of almost an all-purpose paper, but heavier weight than a standard kind of sketchbook. Gotcha. Gotcha. Do you ever use watercolor paper? Not really. Okay. Just because I look at the cost of it and can't really. Yeah, it's expensive. It's what I go through. Mm -hmm. And my process is fairly organic. So I don't, I tend to kind of wing it, which means I might go through more paper than somebody who takes the time to sketch it out and rule it out and do all the things. Yeah, for sure. 
Cool. Okay. Well, let's see your process then. So, um, and okay. like mostly just because I want to get my face off this screen. Yeah, yeah. Here. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I'm gonna get off here, and I'll just let you kind of show us your show us your ways. Um, and then if anybody has any questions um, that do come up that are kind of like need to be answered on the spot, um, I will, I'll just talk them out. You'll hear my voice, but you won't be able to see my face. Sure thing. All right. Okay. So here you go. I think I just went the wrong way with one of my little tripody things. So I was saying before we got on the call, usually... I have a little tray full of all my eco lines like this. But we had a fun accident in the moving process and so it's empty. <clears throat> but I think but, that's such a genius, it's such a genius idea, the ice cube tray. Yeah, so you can often find them around. This one's really good because it has um, an actual seal on the inside here and so they don't dry out. So once it's actually done up and then I just put, you know, all the colours in there. Sometimes I'll do um, a little thing with swatches on the top, but um, this particular one didn't have that. So I will actually lay this down. This is my slightly ridiculous collection of eco lines. <clears throat> because if you have seen my stuff on Instagram, you would see that I do lots of like rainbowy things. So um, I also have a tendency to buy the same colour over and over because I forget which ones I've run out of and I should have a photo on my phone, but I don't. Um, so I like to kind of stick within this kind of spectrum. There are other colours in the eco line range that are a bit more um, warm and whatnot, but I, or the pastels I don't really use a lot. I kind of prefer to use the really bold colours. So I'm going to grab out... A rainbowy kind of thing for us. It's really weird talking to myself. <laughs> We're here on the other end. <laughs> I know. I've actually. my happy little rainbow and the reason for the um, ice cube tray is that otherwise you have to take all the lids on and off and that's really annoying <laughs> and then you end up spilling it all over your desk well that or I walk away to go and deal with a child or something and I completely forget and I come back and they're all still open plus who wants to do this every time <laughs> But they do go everywhere and I always end up with them all over my hands when I'm um, opening and closing them as well, which is not fun. You can probably only see like the first four on camera. Oh, no, because you put me full screen, didn't you? Yeah, I can see a bunch. Okay. Okay. See all of them now? I think so you put ready. them in the Roy G. Biv order, whatever it is. Who knows? I just put it in the order I know I'm going to use them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually wanted to ask you about that. Like when we're talking about which colors blend well and stuff together, did yeah. you kind of just figure that out with like practice? Um, I think. Well, I guess that's just the way they work in my brain and so that's the way I use them. Um, the only thing I really do is that when you kind of go through this kind of lighter spectrum here, I tend to actually wash my brush in between. Otherwise, the eco lines are so pigmented that you actually don't really even need to. So you can kind of go straight from one to the other and get away with it. Um, I don't know. That's just what makes logical sense to my brain. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you could start anywhere and go any of the, like, you could start at the red and come back around or whatever too. Yep. Does that even make sense? Yep. So 
these two brushes that I've got, I use kind of differently. I have, um, but you want to talk blending, don't you? Mostly. Well, all of it. Anything. All of it. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So this is normally I would tuck them over to my right because it's kind of annoying having it there. And I also haven't picked up a paintbrush in a couple weeks, but you know, that's where that goes, right? See, look, I've already got paint ink on my fingers. Um, so I really love these because they're really drippy. One of the things that's really hard when you're doing lettering with um, like normal kind of palette watercolours is that it's hard to get the right consistency. Like have you done much lettering with actual watercolours? Um, not from a palette. I usually use either the liquid ones or um, like a tube. Yeah, okay. I just find the thing I like about the eco lines is that they're just really easy to use kind of straight out of the pot. Yeah. Because the consistency is right. It just kind of works. So as you can see, I kind of just kind of just keep going from one pot to the other. So and are you, are you able to zoom in a tiny bit on the letters just yeah. so we can see like where they overlap, where the colors bleed into mm -hmm. each other? A bit? Let me come down closer. Trying to work out which way my um, tripod moves. No, that's perfect. Um, so, going though then from like that to a lighter color. So if I I've still got the I can't find out where the camera is. That's hilarious. Um, from there into the lighter green you'll kind of get a little bit of a um, crossover. So see, that's kind of a bit of a dirty green. In that instance, I'd probably, whereas that's the straight color of that green after I've washed my brush. And so when you started with that first A, you didn't have any water on your brush, right? It was just right into the Correct. ink? Correct, I just stuck it straight into the ink, yeah. I find that the eco lines, it doesn't matter a huge amount. I actually just realized they ran the wrong way. Um, they're pretty robust, which is nice. And so do you just kind of use each color that's on your brush until you need to redip, or do you ever like, like I see some people who will basically they do one each stroke in a different color, but it seems like you're kind of doing each letter in a different color. Do you have any sort of rules for that? Not really. I really have rules around much, which is, you know, always <laughs> interesting. Um, I think that's what I mean by like my process is kind of, quite organic like I think it depends what I'm working on um sometimes I do work in this kind of rainbow order and then other times I'll decide to just kind of work you know with sort of the green like with just the the pinks and purples or something and just kind of go back and forward with that and in that instance I'd probably be more inclined to just change color every time I dipped my brush but then I can be a little bit um like I'm not really really consistent even with how I necessarily do that so if I'm doing like with the M sometimes you'd I'd do it in three strokes and other times I'll do it in two strokes or whatever does that make sense yep totally um and then the other thing is sometimes if I'm trying to blend between two kind of colors I will actually go between two pots so um as I said that's the thing I like about the eco lines is that you don't really get any kind of trend like you can stick a brush that's got purple on it into this and it's not going to be enough to actually change the color of the aqua ink like I'm not very precious about that kind of thing yeah, neither am I. I think a lot of people are, but it's, yeah, like you said, they're really pigmented, so it doesn't really affect it too much unless you, like, dump half the thing in the other one, but. Yeah, that's wouldn't. the thing. I mean, if you put a really dark color into a yellow, you might have issues, but for the most part, it's really not going to kind of make a huge difference. I 
always think it's interesting too because then you just get kind of different colours as you go. What would you say is your favourite, like, two-colour combo for the way they bleed together? Um, uh, I'm a bit partial to kind of pink and purple just because I love those colours. And I do think you'd probably, you'd get better bleeds if you did use a higher quality watercolour paper. Um, but I like the way these do that and work together. I've run out of paper too. See, quality arting. Somebody that's asked if that's happening. a, is that the number two brush you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that is. So that one's the kind of, white Taclon one so it's quite stiff and so I letter with it the same way I would letter with a brush pen but if I'm using the other one the um Windsor and Newton this one see this one I will wet before I use it I don't know why because since you asked that question before um this one I tend to use with a really kind of top down kind of thing and so actually use the direction of the brush a bit more. I was going to ask you about that because I noticed, I've noticed in your videos, you kind of hold your brush a little differently than most people. And I, is it just that one that you do? Yeah. It's just because this one is really smushy. Great word. Hey, um, <laughs> it's really soft. And so it's actually coming apart a bit at the moment, but like, it's a lot harder. So, you know how with the other brush, I was kind of using a push pull motion, like a brush pen. Yeah, like you hold your hand on one angle and just change the right. pressures. But so this one, I, you're, you're right. If I try right. and do that with, yeah, if I try and do that with this one, it's really hard to get a push out of it because it's so soft. And so, like, that's kind of more, more of a push motion. And it's just a lot harder. It takes a lot more control. So I don't know. I think when I first picked up this kind of brush, I just just really like the fact that you could do these kind of really lovely um, kind of fine point things on the top of the brush. Like I think it's so sense. interesting because I, I feel like you're the only person I've ever seen hold it that way. <laughs> That's really funny. Which is um, not, it's not a bad thing. It's just interesting. Like I've had people ask yeah. me that before if holding paint brushes is different than holding brush pens. And I, I guess it, it could be depending on, you know, the shape of the brush you're using. Yeah, it's really only this brush. So, like, that's me holding this brush like a brush pen, like kind of on that side angle, keeping it the same up and down, not taking the brush, like not changing the horizontal plane of the brush, vertical plane, I don't know, whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and then that's kind of my other little weirdo thing that I like doing. But, yeah, I mean, nine times out of ten now I use the tackle and brush and I just treat it the same as a brush pen. Yeah. Um, what else were we going to look at? We were going to talk about, like, the eco lines, hey, dipping yeah, the pens. Yeah, if you pens. have the pens. I do, I do, I do. So the eco line brush pens, but you can do it with any brush pen, really, that's going to kind of – um, clean off well enough, I guess. But this was something I started doing with the Pentel Aquash to start with. So I, and it's something I actually don't do very often anymore. Something like this that is a filled, this one comes filled with, it's a Pentel purple jobby, but it's got, can you see that clearly? It's got bristles yeah. on the end of it. So it's more like a, um, it's more like, a brush than a pen and so that's it just kind of straight out of like out of the brush and then if I dip it to start with you get a fun little gradient thing as the color wears off This is not quite as effective. I'd normally use like a pink with a blue, but you can see where the kind of, it starts really heavily blue. And then because it's got the ink pushing through underneath, it gives a really nice kind of blended fade gradient, whatever word we want to use. 
I find those ones, depending which um, paper you're using too, you'll get like a gritty kind of texture with them, which is yeah. cool. Yeah, I like that. And it depends on the, so that particular one runs pretty well. And the Pentel Aquash, like the ink comes out of those pretty well, although you can squeeze those if you need to. This one here, I've got like a pink eco line in it that I've put in it. It's just like a cheapy thing. Um, and so it'll start quite blue. So you have pink in there and you dipped it in the blue. Yeah, and this is the worst lettering ever, but I'm on the weirdest angle. <laughs> but, yeah, you can see that it kind of wears through. And so you get a really nice blend. And, yeah, if it's running low, that one runs quite a lot. You can see it's quite inky. Um, but you can do the same thing with brush pens as long as you're, again, not, like, wildly precious about your brush pens. <laughs> I'm not really opposed to damaging things for the sake of art. So, but I know some people are very, very precious about how they use their pens. So I actually think this might still have some blue on it. So that's the so Ecoline. Eco -Line. Yeah. So Ecoline put out these brush pens. They have a tendency to kind of like they're, nice and dramatic which is great but sometimes the tip doesn't bounce back as much as I'd like it to like you know how the Tombos have you got some of these yep and yeah, I totally agree pretty, yeah they're different to a Tombow that kind of bounces back really nicely um okay so but we can do the same thing where dipping it in a color to start with gives kind of a fun blended effect as the color wears off I don't think it does it as nicely as the um, Pentel, but it's a cute effect anyway. I'm sure you can see that. It looks really dark. Is that my screen? It looks – we can see the blend for sure. Cool. Yep. Cool. Okay. Were those the things – what else did you want me to show you? Um, I, you know what? I was just mostly curious about the way you hold your brush. <laughs> That's so funny. That's just because this brush is, yeah, super soft and squishy. And I like doing weird things with it. <laughs> so can, are there any colors that you, like, purposely don't blend together when you're doing, like, when you had all those pots out that you wouldn't, like, put beside each other? Yeah, I definitely am not a fan of doing things like orange and blues together and stuff like that. I tend to stick um, – I'm going to pop this back up a little Yeah, bit. like maybe can you show us the order of your pots and we can list yeah. them out. Maybe just because that's pretty to look at too. <laughs> it is pretty. Wow, my phone is overheating too. We might, I'll, if it gets too bad. Um. So I tend to keep them in this kind of space. So if I was going to do, I would do these three together and then I would do something like that. Like those are kind of the combinations that I tend to do if I'm going to do a, a, a smaller palette than just the whole rainbow. So it's sort of like temperatures if you look at it. It's like the Probably, hot ones yeah. and then the medium ones and the cool ones. Yeah. Which makes um, sense. I might do that that would be one of the purples the purples and blues and possibly put the pinks down here as well but it would be really unlikely that I would do oranges and greens in a piece or um, even orange and blue together but that's partly because I don't really like orange <laughs> yeah but also like you kind of do it once and you realize that it turns greenish, and then yeah yeah, yeah. well I don't know that I don't know that I've ever actually done that. But, yeah, I mean, I think it works in a piece where you're going back and forward and they're not connected. Like you could definitely use any of those colours in one piece, you know, like you get this kind of, you know, colour range. But I wouldn't be putting, you know, yeah, these colours blending into each other. Yeah. I've got ink all over my hands now. <laughs> I don't play with the pots. <laughs> so can you, can we just do like, 
can you just write one more piece just how, like mm -hmm. for fun just live for us to watch because it's fun to watch each other <laughs> <laughs> if you really wanted to you could write the happy ever crafters sure. if you wanted to you know just if i wanted to yeah I'm just if gonna you really wanted to <laughs> you know, after, the week after you've done Stefan and oh did you do Stefan last week with his composition stuff yeah you're gonna push my like on the fly composition <laughs> hilarious yeah I mean my water is like such a delightful color now yeah okay let my brain think I feel like I should have some like fancy classical music playing while you're doing this. Hilarious. People get upset with me because I don't put music on the back of my things. But like 90% of people watch it without the sound on anyway. So. Yeah. I think I just didn't even leave enough room for what I wanted to do. But anyway, we're just going to stack it. Can you just move your paper up a little? I know your paints are in the way, but. I'm trying to eyeball crafters, which is working really well for me. <laughs> yeah, we sort of put you on the spot. It's all fine. You can see what the real version of this looks like, hey? So while you're doing that, well, maybe I, I won't distract you, but um, well, the one question we did get um, beforehand from somebody was whether or not it's possible to add pigment powder to liquid watercolors. Have you ever tried that? So I think um, it would depend a little bit on what you were hoping to achieve. I mean, I think if you were wanting to change the color of the actual watercolor I'd rather just mix to like I mix eco lines all the time and that's fine like if I wanted a like that orange is actually a mixed orange because I don't like the orange that they produce um but if you are wanting to add say like a um a shimmer or something to a um thing I do have these little like perlex pigments and I've definitely added them do you know actually what I added them to was like a black one and that's kind of cool I kind of mixed it through and it just gave you this cool little kind of shimmery, glittery effect in the black ink. That was fun. Um, and not dissimilar to like these um, Jane Davenport. Um, they're like the – my brain is just not working this morning and I have no excuse because I've had coffee. Um, they're like the Pentel Aquash, but they've actually got like a glitter ink inside them. Like you can see the glitter's kind of settled a bit there. Um, on the end so you could definitely do that kind of thing but I think if you were wanting to actually just adjust the color of the liquid watercolor I would be more inclined to mix watercolors mix two of the same thing yeah Does yeah for thing? sure yeah yeah that's like almost scented which is all right for eyeballing it right I think it looks great <laughs> um but actually speaking of that we just got another question um yeah asking because your process is so organic like that like how many mess ups would you say are there to every final piece like if you post something on Instagram how many on average would you say you did before you posted 
Um, I think it would depend on how big the piece was because, I mean, in a lot of senses, um, like this, I would only do once more because it's only really the bottom that's out or I'd do it again with the happy and then Evercrafters side by side because my brain lost a word when I was thinking it through um, and that was just because I didn't think through how many letters were there. <laughs> if I hadn't been talking, I might have. Um, so uh, it depends what it is. Like if it's a single word, often you are seeing the first version of it. If it's a longer piece, um, sometimes what I'll actually do with a longer piece is jump on the computer and just type it out in a font to see where the letters, where the word, the line breaks fall. And then I can adjust. So like, okay, if you want to be precise about, um, well, there's a couple of things because my process is organic. My style is what it is. So my spacing is never 100% Right. Right. So if you were going to sit down and look at it from a true calligraphy perspective, like this space here is not right. This I've done weird things here. I've pulled these closer because I thought I had to get more words in. You know, like I I bend spaces in weird ways to kind of fit my style. Part of why I do an uneven baseline on my lettering is to accommodate for the fact that I don't like to write it out beforehand. <laughs> Um, so, um, it would be really rare that I'd do more than four goes at something. Cool. I think. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that was probably different when you first started too. Like you said, sometimes you, you're seeing the first go, but that mm. it probably wasn't like that when you started. No, but I think that was part of that finding my style and deciding what I was okay with and what I wasn't. Like, I think we're so harsh on our own art so often and I mean I, like the video of this I still would have posted a video of that on Instagram because well partly because from this angle you can't even tell that it's not um completely centered yeah. plus it's only the bottom word plus people are watching it for the happy blending and the strokes they're not watching it for the actual you know preciseness of the final piece I also tend to think nowadays people aren't following me for you know, precision spacing. Do you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. not my personal strength. So some of that, yeah, now I'm kind of more comfortable in my own skin and in my own style, whereas even maybe a year or two ago or something, um, I was a bit more like, oh, that's not good enough or it's not what I was aiming for or whatever. So, yeah. I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, so just before we switch back to your face, someone asked, mm -hmm. um, if you have any cool techniques for making a watercolor background, do you have anything offhand that you could just demo real quick or do you not really? Not really. Oh, no, I don't really do it a lot. Um, other than I love big fat brushes, so I don't have any on my desk right now, but I love the way the eco lines kind of blend together for that though. You'd want decent paper. Like, I don't know if you can see, but this has warped a little bit from this paper and, you know, it's not amazing paper. Um, but the eco lines do kind of smoosh together really beautifully. Yeah. They have a nice big brush. Yeah. And um, to the person who asked that question, I can't see the name right now, but um, I have a, um, a tutorial on YouTube for how to do that. There's like a, a really cool Ziploc bag technique that you can do. That's really, really easy. Um, so you can go check that out too. But yeah, even just taking a big brush and dipping it in those inks and just tossing them on the paper always looks pretty. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. really matter what you do with eco lines. They always look nice. Exactly. Yeah. They're amazing. Um, and then someone asked, do you have any other materials that you would recommend for watercolor? Like, is this pretty much what you use all the time? This is really kind of what I use. I did grab out a couple of other inks. I mean, I own a bunch of different inks. I've definitely played with, you know, a range of different things. And I think, um, you know, I think one of the things we get hung up on is having the right thing when actually what we need to do is just try something. And nine times out of 10, you just need to kind of grab something and play with it. That's why, particularly in the early days, I did even post videos using like my kids' art supplies because I think it's much more about actually getting into doing the process than it is about waiting until you have the right things. Um, 
we get hung up on that. So, you know, find whatever you can find in your local art shop and try it and find whatever, go through what your kids have already got if you've got kids at home and, you know, experiment and play and don't get hung up on needing the, you know, like this brush costs like $2. It's a cheap brush. This one costs like $15. But, you know, you can buy cheap brushes from the dollar store kind of thing that will do it and it's more about building the muscle memory and experimenting and trying stuff yeah for sure Hmm. okay I actually have some I'm gonna put myself back on even though the light is all weird right now um Mm -hmm. because I I think there's a a bunch of people that are also watching from Canada and the U.S. and um I know you guys in Australia don't have Michaels but um we do and when I was over there did you (laughs) yeah Hmm. Um, so they have a brand called Artists Loft. If anybody knows yeah, Artists Loft, and that. my um, yeah, my bottles are all messed up because they leaked in my um drawer. But they have liquid watercolors too, and they're not terrible. They're not as good as Ecoline, but they're a cheap alternative. So if anybody is looking to just try this for like the first time and doesn't want to shell out a bunch of money for the right. Um, paints these are decent alternatives so artists loft um, liquid watercolors and they have a couple different colors they don't have as great of a selection of colors so you'll have to kind of do some more blending but it's a good experience anyway to do that and then also um, as far as white tacklon brushes I don't know what the brand you were using was I think it was an Australian one but here we have um, Princeton so Princeton oh, snap those too. yeah so Princeton snap brushes are like my very favorite <laughs> I find the like the tip on them is really it bounces back really nicely. It doesn't like fray or anything. Um, it works pretty well. So if anybody um, and someone asked if I would do a list of supplies, yes, I will always always give you the list of supplies from this video. So don't worry about writing stuff down. You'll be able to get it afterwards too. Um, any other supplies you have there, list that are just fun to play with? Oh, look, I have another one of these. This is a snap flow. Do you not like them? Um, this one is a little bit more like the Windsor and Newton. But this oh, that one one's got really big... that one's really long. Yeah, mine's different. Yeah, and this one's really big. It's not really comparative. Honestly, I really just think um, I have like drawers full of um, brushes. I <clears throat> buy a lot of brushes, but I kind of just keep going back to. These two. That's why this one has paint on the end. It reminds me it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I have a bunch of different things um, that I use because I do just anywhere I go that I see inks or, you know, anything. I just pick it up. But, yeah, it's just a matter of playing with it. I love all of them. All of yeah. the colors. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually used Ecoline paints for this painting. It's just sitting oh, on my desk right so now. Pretty. I've just like started playing with them because I like the way they blend. So like they're not just um, not just good for lettering. You can actually paint with them. So if anybody does watercolor yeah. painting, like they're not they're not uh, only for blending letters together. So pretty. Um, do you want to put your face back on? I feel like I'm talking to sure. your writing. <laughs> <laughs> put the ceiling on. Hang on. So anything um, exciting in the pipeline for you? Anything you want to tell people about or should I just be? So I have your website listed here. Um, I'll pop that up on the screen if anybody wants to go to that. Or um, it's just list letters on Instagram. But is there anything anything exciting in your world? Oh, I have two exciting things, but I'm, I'm still just trying to get the. They'll hopefully be out at least. Uh, <laughs> that's so bad I really should have thought that through beforehand um I'm hoping to announce them this week but yeah my email list is the best place to be for that and you can get on there from your website from my website or from yeah my Instagram link has a link to there too cool okay so we've got both of those up here but um thanks so much that was awesome I'm Pleasure. like I Honestly, I've been meaning to ask you about the way you hold your brush because it has so come funny. up. It has come up in multiple workshops that I've had. Because really? whenever I'm talking about holding brush pens, people ask, like, should I hold yeah. that straight up and down or whatever? And I say sometimes if you're using 
you know, I have those Jane Davenport ones right here. Like yeah. the ones with bristles, I noticed that it yeah. makes a difference if you hold it straighter up and down. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. otherwise I don't ever do that. I just find it so hard. I can't, I can't get precision. Like you must've practiced that a lot more than the average person. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Put my kids yeah. to bed and sit in front of the TV with a pen in my hand, for, pen, paintbrush in my hand for hours. Yeah. Cool. Mm, usually after a glass of wine. <laughs> or with a glass of wine. Or a few, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, um, thanks again for being here. I'm um, Pleasure. thanks for having I'm me. I'm thinking that I'm gonna see lots of different blending experiments coming up in the Facebook group in the next little bit. Amazing. So that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um Okay, well I will uh, I'll let you get on with the rest of your day. But yeah, thanks again for for doing that for us. Amazing. Okay, I will I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Bye.